very different type of horse to look at compared to Anne Slatford's, for instance, with Silvery. And um, it, it, um, it amazes me that um, it's difficult to judge. And it, I, I love judging, but sometimes I find it hard when the purpose of dressage is to have a horse that's really beautiful to ride and with its hocks underneath it and with an um, upward feeling shoulder. And I, I don't really see in, I love the Frisians. I think they're a beautiful horse, but I become a little disillusioned when a horse in collected trot goes with its hind leg very, very out behind it. Um, and because this horse is like a very big thick tail, it, um, you don't quite see how far up his hocks go, but Jeremy's a great guy. He's a, had this horse from a foal, and now the, the horse is a little confused in the aids in the first half pass and the half pass aid, like Travi aid and Canter aid, they're all very similar. So it is easy if you get a horse with a little too much cadence in the trot, like he was doing along the short side, when you get around the corner and put your leg back for the half pass, it is easy to interpret Canter. In the second half pass, the strides weren't quite regular, and so it's difficult to give that a good mark. Jeremy thinking, what am I up to? But the horse can really make some Piaf and Passage. Mm, for me, as a photographer and, and judge and love watching horses, in, in Piaf and Passage, the important thing is, is that the hind legs sit down and that the front legs come up. Now, in Piaf and Passage for me means that the front feet according to the rule book, should come mid cannon bone and the hind feet to the fetlock. But what do you do when a horse's hind feet come almost up to its hocks and its front feet only come up to its fetlock? So you get this very active hind leg with a front leg that isn't so high. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. You can certainly say that the walk is super relaxed, huh? And it has a very big overtrack and good purpose. So for a pace that perhaps you would think that the Frisians aren't great at the walk, it certainly did a really good job. Now in the collection, you can see that the walk remains good forebeat, that the horse stays round nicely to the contact. You can see Jeremy's sitting really still. There's no... Now the transition to passage, which this horse... You can't see any hind legs because of the tail, but constantly a little bit, the right hind up a little bit in the first few steps and again high right hind and this is what I find difficult for me I see the hind feet higher than the front feet and I don't understand this in Piaf and Passage yet the judges still mark this really well so I could always ask Jill Cobcroft who's sitting behind an uh, international judge was an international judge now is a now judging nationally here. She judged here yesterday in the prison, George. And again in the canter, he has a very, very good active hind leg, especially inside hind. Now the two time changes should be straight. And the, the neck, when you compare this to silvery, for instance, the neck shouldn't be bending left and right quite so much and it would be nice to see a little more ground cover in the changes. By nature this horse has a very beautiful front and if he stands in the stable you could just put a bridle on him and sit on him he'd look as though he was in a Grand Prix frame. So you know these horses are built to have a good frame and again from behind I see the inside hind leg way higher than the inside foot, front foot, the hind hoof, higher than the front hoof. And so in my mind that shows great activity for sure, but maybe a lack of sitting. And I think in dressage, well, it's not... It, this, poor Jeremy's having a bit of a struggle with the stallion today. He's not really 
going like I think he can do. The zigzag lacked a little bit of sideways. It was a little bit symmetrical, but one, two, four, five, six, seven. He got the 15 ones. They're not dead straight, but they were 15 ones, and you could tell that they one time changes. So he can tick that box for sure. And it's a feat in itself when you think of how difficult Grand Prix test is. That's really out of control. This Jeremy's having a really difficult time. Now the one to the right, and really the same. It, 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 you, you just looks like a small circle. It's important that you feel the horse, maybe start in shoulder four position, and then the inside, the outside highly comes across and takes the weight under the midline of the horse's body so he can then stand on the hind legs and move around. Another thing that was interesting from a French photographer told me that when a, you're behind a horse that's trotting or even side onto a horse that's doing extend or medium trot, the hind feet, if you can see the flats of their feet from behind or from the side, then they're not sitting because the fetlock and the paston and the horse shouldn't flick out backwards. So as you can see now with the hind leg coming up and under it in the Passage, you can see how you don't see the foot flick out backwards, and you, if you were behind, you wouldn't see the sole of its feet. Now, the Piaf, which this horse is usually gets good Piaf and Passage. This was better. This is probably the best at the end, Jeremy. But again, you know, is the pole is the highest point for sure, but is the horse round and over the back? It's difficult to um, describe this and... Uh